All right. So today we're joined by uh, TJ Noel Sullivan. He's a filmmaker and uh, recently put out a, a new film uh, called On the Whistle about basketball here in Hartford. So TJ, thanks so much for taking some time to join us today. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to be on. So TJ, to, to get started, why don't you just give us a little bit of background on yourself and then we could start to dive into the film a bit. Absolutely. So I am born and raised here in Hartford, um, went to Hartford Public Schools my whole life, um, and throughout high school, played basketball and some baseball. Um, and yes, yeah, so I was very involved kind of in sports here in Hartford. Um, and then in 2016, I graduated from Classical Magnet over next to St. Francis mm -hmm. um, and went to Yale for four years um, and studied film there uh, and then graduated there in May of 2020. Uh, and the film On the Whistle is my thesis at Yale. Um, it is a 20-minute uh, basketball short that follows a suburban basketball star who transfers into Hartford High um, and kind of struggles to impress his new uncompromising coach. So talk a bit about the, the premise there and, and how you came up with the idea for this film. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the, the idea came from kind of a mix of things. Um, they were obviously in the sports world. Uh, so I wrote the first draft in spring 2019. And in the sports world, there were a lot of conversations kind of happening uh, that influenced the idea a little bit. Um, so right about when I wrote it was the incident. Um, you might remember Tom Izzo, the coach of Michigan <laughs> State, was like on uh, national television really screaming at one of his players. And it kind of sparked this debate, not just in the sports world, but like on national news around what, where's the line with tough love coaching and that kind of thing. Um, and it got me talking with some of the guys that I played with um, back in high school. And we were kind of talking about, you know, our coach was not quite that extreme, but there, there were definitely, you know, part of high school basketball is having a coach get angry with you and yell at you and, you know, that kind of thing. And we talked about how in the moment that felt horrible. And, you know, when you're running the suicides as punishment and that kind of thing, you hate it. Uh, but now looking back on it, we realize how much it shaped our lives. And so part of what I wanted to do with the short was kind of, write a film that that examined uh where this line was and the impact of you know tough love coaching styles and and where that fell uh, at the same time i also kind of drew on some of my own personal experiences um so i attended classical magnet which uh, is a very diverse school it's one of the magnet schools in the state that's set up with uh racial diversity quotas um and so uh i kind of wanted to explore a couple of ideas including this idea of uh how many white students in Connecticut will graduate high school and never have had a teacher of color. I um, mean, kind of what that means and uh, exploring this world where you have Luke, who is 17 years old, he's attended a suburban school his whole life, and he's never had a teacher of color. And so if at the age of 17, he suddenly has this coach who not only is telling him no, and is kind of presenting his first major obstacle, but is also doing it in a very abrasive way, um, figuring out know how or examining how he might respond to that um and, and how you know some of these larger trends leads into things like white entitlement and that kind of thing yeah i, I think the film really hit on some interesting points there, and i think the the first one you mentioned was you know you know the the obvious one that comes to mind in that player coach relationship talk a little bit more about that and kind of you know some of the inspiration you drew i, I know you talk about some personal experience but just curious to dive a little bit more into the ideas you had in mind for this player coach relationship. And, and again, I, I think hitting not only on that player coach relationship, but also on those issues of race that you talked about there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I had the benefit of playing basketball my entire life. And so I had kind of a wide range of coaches. Um, and so I was able to pull from, you know, different lines in the film or mm -hmm. pulled from different coaches that I had. Some things I, you know, made up myself, but some, a lot of things were pulled from coaches. Um, and part of that was I kind of wrote the first draft, and I was also, as part of the research and the preparation for this film, I watched just basically every basketball film that's ever been made. Um, and to some extent, like the generic line, you know, when everybody comes together and says team, right, there's some like generic coaching lines yeah. that have been used so much that at this point they feel somewhat inauthentic. Um, and so one of the things I loved doing in this film was bringing in some of the lines that I remembered from my experience playing basketball. And I, I think they bring an authenticity to the film um, because it's not just a, a coach generic, delivering generic lines, but it's, it's real things that I remember from my experience. Mm -hmm. um, 
And to the, to the um, question around race, yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, you can tune into March Madness on basically any, you know, given game and you will see uh, lots of white coaches who are, have a predominantly black um, team and right. There's lots of yelling and Mm -hmm. lots of that. Um, And I think we don't give a second thought to that really. Um, And one of the things, interesting things I wanted to do in this film is like, I think when we switch that around, right. When it's, we have the white player who's being screamed at by the black coach, right. We see it in a much different light and we kind of examine it a lot more. Um, And so that was, that was part of it. Um, And then also leading into like, uh, things around just yeah, this, this, this sense of entitlement that, hey, I'm a player and I deserve to, you know, get X, Y, and Z, um, right? Like this expectation of democracy yeah. on a team, that kind of thing. Yeah, really, really interesting points that, that you bring up there. I'm, I'm curious now to dive a little bit more into the filmmaking process. So we don't, we don't see a ton of films being made here in Hartford. Um, talk a bit about what that process was like for you and, and getting everything organized and, and what went into ultimately producing this short film. Yeah, absolutely. So I knew right away that I wanted to shoot this short in Hartford, right? I'm from Hartford. Um, and I knew that I had a lot of resources and connections here that would allow me to shoot it here. Um, I, I've said now, and I, I think this is true, this film could only have been shot in Hartford um, because, you know, when making a short film, you have a limited budget. Uh, and so you have to find in-kind services, donations, people who are willing to volunteer their time to make it happen. Um, and so we could have tried to go to New York uh, to shoot this film. And to, in some ways, some things might've been a little bit easier to do in New York, but overall, I think we only would have been able to pull it off here in Hartford. Um, so for example, uh, all of the basketball players in the film, they're, we have our two lead actors, um, and but then we have a bunch of basketball players that make up the rest of the kids that are trying out for the team. And all of our basketball players in the film were people who volunteered. Almost all of them were former high school basketball players or a couple current high, high school basketball players in Connecticut who volunteered their weekend. I was We shot January 4th, 5th, and 6th of 2020, um, mm-hmm. so before everything got shut down. Um, but we, they all showed up at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, and you know, you've seen the film. It, it is a bit grueling. In, we have a whole day of them <laughs> doing suicides and conditioning. And that was our first day of shooting. Um, and we were a little concerned that we shot this first day and that they were going to yeah, all be no. like, oh my God, this is horrible. I don't want to come back. But they all showed up for day two. No one walked off the set there. So that's yeah. a good sign. <laughs> yep, exactly. And uh, you know, a lot of it was but to that community support aspect though, like Part of it was our lunch for all three days of filming was donated by Salute Restaurant downtown. Mm. Um, who, if you've ever eaten at Salute, you know they have amazing food. Uh, yeah, great stuff. And so, there. yeah, our, our cast and crew were, you know, praising. This was probably the best uh, food provided on a student <laughs> film set in history. Um, so, yeah, it was a lot of community support. Um, the Hartford Public Schools and my alma mater. So I went to Classical Magnet. That's also where we shot the film. Um, there was just so much support there. My old coach... Uh, not only, you know, rearranged his practice schedule for that weekend so that we could get in and film in the time that we needed, um, but he also lent us all the balls that, you know, the ball rack and all that stuff um, and the jerseys and so many of the props that are used in the film, you know, on That's a, awesome. a yeah. big budget film, we might have to go out and buy those or rent those. And they were just kind of lent to us for free, which was huge. Talk about, you know, the benefits of filming in Hartford. I know you mentioned some especially on a film with a budget like this, but do you see Hartford as a place that can be a, a film hub going forward? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lot of the conversation that uh, I think this film was brought up and I'm really excited to have because, you know, we do have the feature length version of the film, right? This film is a 20 minute proof of concept short film. Uh, and we have the script for the two hour long version of this movie that follows Luke and coach Weaver throughout the course of the season and also develops the relationship with the mom and the relationship with his new teammates. Um, so I would absolutely love to shoot that in Hartford. And I do think that's something that hopefully we're going to be able to do. Um, shooting in Hartford, I think a couple of the perks are one, there's just this excitement around shooting in Hartford. You know, if you mm-hmm. go to New York, uh, you'll talk to a lot of people who say, yeah, every day on their walk to work, they pass a different film set. Yeah. Right? And so the idea of like film sets are boring and they see them more of a hassle Versus here, I think people in Hartford and people in the state of Connecticut are really excited, not just about movies happening, but having, you know, their town shown on screen, 
um, and, and seeing themselves on screen. Uh, and so I think there's a lot of excitement here, which is so big um, in having this kind of community-based filmmaking happening. Um, and, and also we have a lot of great uh, young professional filmmakers who I would be remiss if I didn't, you know, think because so much of our gear and our crew were people who believed in the project and were excited about it. And they lived here in Hartford. And so they said, yeah, you know, a lot of the times in order to get cool projects, they have to go into New York or Boston. And so they heard about this project and they were excited to come volunteer for three days or lend us a camera for three days, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I think there is definitely this growing uh, hub for, for Hartford to be a place where movies are made. That's great to hear. And I think certainly excited and exciting news for everyone around here. In terms of being able to watch this film, how can people uh, check it out? And I, and I know we'll, we'll link to the trailer here so everyone can at least uh, get a look at that. But where can they view the, the full film if they want? Yeah, so you can also link to the full film, which is now on Vimeo. Uh, so if you search on the whistle, um, you should find it or you can search my name, TJ Noel Sullivan. Uh, so it's both there. It's also currently today, it's being featured on directorsnotes.com. Uh, so Director's Notes did a kind of Q&A with me on the directorial process behind the film. Uh, and FilmShortage.com, which is a site that curates some of the best short films submitted globally. So very excited. It's get, it's get, the film's getting some good buzz. Um, and yeah, hopefully uh, people will go out and watch it because that's so much of it is sharing it with the right people and get building the excitement around the film. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, definitely recommend it uh, out there to uh, anyone who's looking to check it out, uh, especially as we're starting to get some basketball action back with the uh, NBA. But if you're still looking for some more basketball, Phil, uh, great way to, to get that in. I'll get you out of here on this one, TJ. I know you mentioned earlier to prep for this film, you watched all of the basketball movies out there. Do you have a favorite of the ones that, that you came across during your time researching? Um, so I will say one that was a heavy influence and, and one people might have seen is Amateur, which just came out on Netflix mm -hmm. or came out recently on Netflix. Um, it's directed by Ryan Koo and it follows a 14 year old, you know, five star recruit as he's going through the high school basketball process and trying to get recruited. Um, and it was not only a great story, but also the way they shot it. I mean, you've seen the film and so much of what we tried to do here was in those basketball sequences, we want to try and bring you into the players' heads. And so that's moving. You know, we had this fun rickshaw contraption on set, which basically allowed our camera operator to sit and get pushed at very high speed so that he could be alongside the players as they were sprinting down the court. Um, and so a lot of that, the visual language for the film and how to shoot basketball in a really engaging and interesting way, um, we kind of pulled from Amateur, which was great. Very cool. So... Uh... Great to hear it. And TJ, uh, best of luck as you uh, work towards promoting this film and, and hopefully getting a, a full feature uh, out of it because definitely, definitely really enjoyed it. So again, TJ Noel Sullivan, the, the film is on the whistle. Vimeo, check it out. We'll link to it all. And uh, thanks again for coming on. We appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thanks, TJ. All right. Bye.